started my garden because I needed to rebuild trust with the universe. I needed to feel confident at something, to produce tangible growth without the interference of external voices. I needed something to do and think about on a daily basis so I no longer felt like a failure at life, something to distract myself from the wrongs of the world, to hold myself accountable for a routine project, to feel like I was helping solve a problem on my own terms, to be less angry about life in general. And gardening has that effect on you. It doesn't allow you to half-ass it, to turn on cruise control and check out. Every task pulls you in. There's the intentional and repetitive motion of pulling weeds that allows your mind to wander, but not too far. There's the constant engagement of checking soil vitals and planting hold depths and figuring out what needs to be pruned and what needs to be harvested. And that's really the thing about a garden. The more love you give it, the more it will give you in return. And sure, you could buy one, but you can't buy the sense of fulfillment that you get from tending to it yourself. That's something that you have to earn. So the other evening I came home from work and it was a really long day. My hands were full of mail, my arms were weighed down by groceries, I had 56 stairs up, the, up to the top of my house and I was really stressed because I had sat in traffic for the last hour. My to-do list felt like it was a mile long and that didn't even include anything like doing the dishes or sweeping the floors and I was angry that I had more work to do after work and I dreaded walking in my front door. So I did what any rational person would do. I walked into the kitchen, I set everything down, I poured myself a glass of wine and I went back and I sat on my patio. And after I finished that glass of wine, I took a deep breath and I walked back inside and that's when I saw it. This small passion fruit seedling sitting on my windowsill, withered and gasping for life. And I realized at some point in the rushing around and saying I'm too busy and saying I'll get to it later when I have the time, I had completely forgotten about it. It hadn't done anything to upset me. I just, I was literally so overwhelmed by everything else. I had checked out on the most meaningful part of my world. And in the process, I had ignored it and now it was dying. We live in an incredibly fast-paced world, full of instant gratification in the form of likes and right swipes and retweets. We're told we can lose weight in a month, we can learn a language in a week, we can become millionaires overnight. We're praised for being hyper-productive, for filling our time and space with busyness, and we seek the accolades that come with the benchmarks we know we can hit. And rather than choosing to work in a space that requires quiet dedication, to cultivating and amassing knowledge. After all, who will notice if we do that? Who will praise us for it? It's such a rarity to encounter anything that isn't immediately attainable. And when we do, we almost never regard it for the gift that it is. We hate being patient. We hate waiting. Now I have a lot of people approach me on a regular basis and they say, oh, I wish I could grow a garden like you do but I don't have the time. Or they'll say, oh, if only I could keep a plant alive, but I don't understand how you do it. And all I can think is, you do have the time, and you can do it. You just have to understand why it's important to you first. And the last time I had this conversation, for probably about the thousandth time, I went home thinking, why is it important? Why do I care? Why do I really care? Because yeah, Growing your own food is cool. And yeah, like walking out the back door while you're cooking dinner with a flashlight to pick thyme or parsley or whatever is really, really cool. But it's so much more than that. Sorry, I need to get this away from here. So, I was a really angry person for years. The hardest part about being angry is that it's not socially acceptable to be it. The hardest part about being angry is that you're supposed to pretend to be happy and it'll magically go away, only it doesn't work like that. It fills you with anxiety and depression and distrust and sadness and you can't figure out where it's coming from and you breathe into paper bags and the wheels in your brain just spin and spin and spin until you burst into tears and you don't know what to do anymore. And there have been dozens of articles written about the healing powers of gardening, but so few of them actually leave you thinking more than, oh, that's cool, they rehab those prisoners, or 
oh, that's really awesome, that community came together and fought obesity. There's rarely a second thought about the potential psychological impact of gardening. And so it's a hard thing to grasp, unless you've also experienced it. And this is the funny part of it all. I mean, how many of you would really love to be more patient, less anxious, less easily irritable, less angry? Anyone? Yeah? And again, how many of you would give anything just to feel more present and really trust the process? <sighs> well, guess what it takes to be a good gardener? I mean, yeah, it takes good soil and sun and water, sure, but that's such a small part of the equation. But back to my dying passion fruit vine. So what happens if you pass a life that is struggling and you don't bother to notice it because you're so involved with yourself? Well, in short, it suffers. And given long enough, it eventually dies. And people kill plants for a number of reasons, soil, pests, disease, but I'd venture to guess that the number one reason that plants die in someone's care is actually neglect. I've learned this the hard way. If I want to be a good, successful gardener, I have to pay attention on a daily basis. Insects can multiply and wipe out an entire crop overnight, or a heat wave can parch your soil two days earlier than your watering app said it should. And because nothing about weather is ever certain, I have to snap myself out of my own head, and I have to engage with the living things around me. I choose to spend some of the moments I'd spend watching TV or going out with friends, weeding or watering the garden instead. I will and I have canceled plans because there was rain in the forecast and I needed to get seeds in the ground immediately. And whenever life gets hard, the best choice I can make is to go and quietly sit in my garden and sit at the level of the plants and touch and taste and smell and listen and really engage all of my senses. Have you ever tried to be angry with a face full of lavender, or nose full of mint, or mouth stuffed full of strawberries? It's damn near impossible. And in these moments, I have zero fear of missing out, because I know I'm not the one missing out. I'm the one who's been gifted the time to think, quiet, solitude. I find meditation in the repetitive motions of pulling weeds and planting seeds. And because these motions are my sole focus at these moments, everything else melts away. Problems I couldn't solve throughout the day become so much more clear. The ecosystem I've created constantly offers answers. And I've learned that if I just slow down and marvel in awe, I can often unlock these insights. It's somewhat ironically in these moments of connection with something other than myself, I find better connection with myself. And I not only have glimpses of the clarity and the confidence that I crave, but I begin to feel like I can actually embody those things. When I look up and I take in the living world around me and I engage with it, my brain starts working better and I start connecting the dots and I start seeing the bigger picture. So another reason people give me for not gardening is, I don't know how. And this strikes me as such a weird response, like I really struggle to understand people who just stop learning I don't think anyone necessarily wakes up one day and goes, hmm, that's it, learned all I need to know, done here. But I think that somewhere between graduating, graduating from institutionalized education and entering the corporate work environment, it just kind of happens. You're taught the rules, and then you're taught to play by the rules, and then you're taught that if you play by the rules, you'll be rewarded, and if you don't, then you'll be punished. And you don't really have a real grasp of why you're doing this, you just know that that's the way it's done. So if you follow the rules, you're almost always guaranteed success. I mean, that's what we're told from an early age. And rules create these safe boundaries for us to work in. They're comfortable. Who likes to be uncomfortable? But the people I associate with success aren't exactly known for lockstepping in line with the rest of the parade. Because you know what else rules are? They're boring. They're limiting. They're creatively stifling. And while gardening does have some rules, like you kind of need water and you probably should have some source of light, at a certain point, the rules don't, acro don't apply across the board for every situation. And I think that's what scares people about gardening. Because if there aren't enough rules to guarantee success 100% of the time, and if it takes work and research and trial and error, then why bother? Well, I'd argue this is exactly the reason to bother. The problem is, and this is really the biggest problem, 
Experimenting can be scary. It's been years since we've thought about doing it. A lot of us have failed too many times. Experimenting requires you giving so much more of yourself than a rule book would in the moment. Mentally, you can't set yourself on autopilot and coast through the unknown as you could with a preset map. You're required to be more alert, more aware, more present, more invested in the now. And that's just the thing. Having a set of rules is easy. It's safe. It doesn't require a whole lot of real, active investment once you've figured it out. It's almost too easy to be lazy and disconnect if you know exactly what you're expected to do and not do. But I can't garden like that, and I see no reason for anyone else to either. When you're starting with a solid outline, and you begin to have a grasp of what's around you, and you begin to feel confident expressing yourself in this medium, you suddenly have an opportunity to try new things and to push boundaries. And unlike school or work, no one is going to tell you that there's only one way to do something, that you're doing it wrong. Your results will speak for themselves. And no one is ever going to tell you that you've learned everything you need to know and you're ready to graduate. That's technically impossible. And that's awesome. As a type A, somewhat OCD, reformed, perfectionist, gardening has completely changed my attitude towards not only what I think I know, but towards failure as well. My garden isn't a place in which I have to abide by rigorous guidelines and wait for the direction of others. It's my safe space to explore and experiment, and play, and push boundaries, and play. <laughs> and that last one is really crucial. That's why I mentioned it twice. <laughs> Adults don't have recess anymore. We've lost sight of the value of playing, of trying new things out, of not overcalculating risk or tangible ROI at every turn. But I believe a daily hour long, even half hour recess outside is crucial to our well-being as mentally stable humans. We need this break. We need to play. It is no surprise that the moment we stop taking the time to make up games and experiment and try things out without fear of failure is the exact moment that we start, feel like, we start to feel like something is missing in our lives. And sure, when I experiment, sometimes plants die. And sure, my attempts at shortcutting a process sometimes actually create more work for myself. But because I'm constantly building and creating something, the effects of these failures and setbacks are less severe. I don't even see them as failure, to be honest. It's kind of like, oh well, another learning tool shaping my worlds. And then suddenly, failure is nothing more than the name for the game. This game of testing your own limits, and your beliefs, and your willingness to trust the process, and your own tenacity. And guess what? In gardening, you can't lose unless you quit. Oh, and P.S., here's a weird secret. Every gardener kills some plants. We just don't usually talk about it. <laughs> it's kind of like how every human is a little insecure. We just don't usually talk about it. Thank you. <laughs>